welcome to me making a tier list for the games that I played in my gaming channel. Now you might be wondering, why not just upload this video to my gaming channel? There's more people here. Maybe they'll have the chance to judge me. <laughs> and you can see the variety of games that I played in my channel involving indie games, AAA games, and what the hell was that? And these are all the pictures that I get from my Steam library, so that's why they look really nice. And they're all in the alphabetical order <laughs> of the games that I purchased. So we got S, A, B, C, D, and F tier. Maybe I should change that to E. So we got S, A, B, C, D, E, F. We got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. <laughs> 7 rows of tiers for me to put on in. Alright, first game. After Us. This game is very pretty and breathtaking uh, cutscenes. Oh. The main thing that attracted me in this game is the TV heads. <laughs> I played this game just to see what the TV heads are about, and apparently they're villains. That hurt me? Oh, okay. They're enemies to me, who is a character that Gaia sent in the game to get back all the endangered and dead animals' souls back to uh, paradise. Something like that. Controls wise is is a little bit slippery, if I remember correctly. Oh god. No okay. <laughs> I'm not sure if they change because I played this back in way back in January, even maybe. I don't remember. I'm gonna put this in a B. Because visual wise, it's pretty good. After party, the same developers that made Oxen Free. This is basically just uh clicking buttons and controlling character moving into the next location. I do remember feeling a little bit bored. <laughs> there are some places the characters are interesting. Uh, for example, I don't really remember, but I, she's some kind of a demon that has squiggly arms and floating around and her voice is really uh, charming and fun and jokingly. So after party, I'm putting in a D because I feel a little bit bored on it. Among Us, fucking A. I play this with my friends, and um, it's a very fun game for, for friends to gather and see who betrayed you. Apex Legends, I actually didn't really play it. I do feel like if I'm good at it, I I would put this in a, in a B. <laughs> but for now, I'm gonna put it in a C because I'm bad at it, but I'm going to be fair. C is for games that are great, but not the best. It's bad, but it's not the worst. I'm getting ready for the comments on trying to attack me. <laughs> Back for Blood, kind of like a Left 4 Dead 2 situation. I played it once, but so I don't really, I can't really tell. Look, maybe it's just me, but I had a hard time navigating that game. <laughs> so see, it is. It's good, but not the best, it's, but it's not the worst either. Battle Block Theater, fuck yes, A all the way. It's funny, it's fun. To play with friends too and everyone should play this because the voice acting is phenomenal <laughs> before your eyes also a a cool game with a very cool mechanic look around with your cursor but to interact you must blink like blinking actually with your eyes i actually don't remember <laughs> i only remember it's kind of like a story of do you think you're a good person you're a bad person do you think you receive you should deserve the Punishment near the end is something like that about life life flashing before your eyes behind the frame <sighs> Oh <laughs> I'm so tempted to put this in S tier because there's a hand-drawn animation game in Ghibli style It's very chill. All you need to do is just uh, use your cursor and paint on the canvas Sometimes you got some really cool things like daylight things that you can do which is making eggs and toast and making coffee and you can see it, how good the animation is. The story is also really good. It like slowly builds up. You get to know to the character as like, oh, someone is next to the window. And then it reaches to the climax and then there's a plot twist and everything is so beautiful. So fucking S2. Bendy and the Dark Revival. Now you might be wondering, where is Bendy and the Egg Machine? <laughs> I didn't play it, but I know the story. So, I didn't bother to play it in the channel. The Meatly did very well on both Benny and the Egg Machine and also Benny and the Dark Revival. 
Benny and the Dark Revival took so long to release, and we can see why. They have cutscenes, they have animations, new weapons, the scale of the entire environment of the um, like the studio as a whole is so big. For the flaws, what I say maybe is that sometimes I get lost easily, but maybe it's just my problem. I do remember they actually made Bendy the character inside the game, and he's super, super cute. I'm gonna put a B. B for Bendy. Buddy Simulator 1984. It's really cool. At first, you start it as a booting screen, and then you type in codes to communicate with this uh, buddy. So it's good. Buddy Simulator. And then later it starts getting upgraded, it starts getting more realistic, and things get a little out of hand, and you put right back to uh, needing to switch it off and erase its memories. The only thing that scared me inside the game is just the glitch sounds and uh, like some things just suddenly appear and disappear, and it makes me question like whether should I trust this buddy. Mm. Gotta put them B. RPG game, B for buddy. <laughs> Bip it. Really cool. I played this with my girlfriend and it's very fun and very cute. Uh, me too. Why not? I can't believe the, the first S tier is a hand drawn animation game that's very chilling. It says a lot about myself. <laughs> Black Book. I played this in the channel, but then I didn't really finish it. It's kind of like Slate Aspire, where, where you play part card games, but it's not cards. I think it's more about book pages. And then you use the book pages as a role-playing thing, like a turn-based combat, and try to attack the enemy. Later on, I start feeling like hold back, like if I'm just not progressing. So, see it is. Rainbow the Mountain King. Now this game is really fun. A small team, I think, as well. They made such a nice 3D. Uh, game space. Another one of the games where they based off on uh, this one, I'm very sure, is from Nordic Fables. They have Skarsgård, they have they have Nakin, and then in the end, I'm not sure like if that's even like a made up fable, but they actually use Hall of Mountain King's song for the Mountain King enemy boss battle. Yes, checkpoint. <laughs> oh. And I think that is the coolest part. But I'm not putting this like A at like right at the top yet. But I'm not sure why. This is the same thing as Little Nightmares. These kinds of games are very hard to depth the perception is a little wonky. And I and I think that's pretty much it. But I'm gonna put in a B anyway. B for Bramble. The Callisto Protocol. I'm not sure why is it the C alphabet when the when the the starts first. Callisto Protocol is like a replica of Dead Space. I do remember when I first played this, it was the day after the release. It was mid. The most frustrating part at the first time I played this game is the healing animation is so slow. My god, do you use it? very slowly. So it's very funny when I first started playing this game and then as I go on in the newer episodes they started updating the game and you can see for yourself which parts they updated. The most obvious one is uh, speeding up the healing animation but another thing that they didn't really fix is the enemies cancels my character's animation sometimes. <laughs> There are some places where I think that, oh, I'm going to hit it. The enemy anyway is fine, but the enemy kills me. Like, it's a triple A kind of graphics, but it's it's just, it's not there yet. I try to be as judgmental as I can. Um, normally, I'm not that kind of person. I just finish a game, I was like, I like it, and then I move on with my life. Coffee Talk, a very chill game as well. You're basically just a barista behind the behind the table as the customers walk in and they talk about their life. It's kind of like a bar, but we're in the coffee bar. There was one episode where they wanted you to try things out and create a recipe, and then I don't know what to do until I looked it up to know like the ingredients that I need to be able to make this certain beverage for that character. It's like there's a lot of beverages that don't appear there what their ingredients should be used until after you experimented it and and successfully. But that's really the only flaw to this game. I'll put it B. 
because of that. <laughs> Cuphead. I didn't finish it, but I know how hard it goes. I think I've gone to uh, the bee queen and then I've never touched it again. <laughs> Have I beaten her? I think I've beat the queen. It's very difficult, but difficult in some way that you can learn how they do it. It's just like Dark Souls and Elden Ring. And they're all hand-drawn animations, like Disney style. Hey, you. Carrion. Probably one of the first games that I replayed like two, three times. The third time is when I created my channel. And then the two times were before I created my channel. So I'm putting this S tier. <laughs> I mean, come on, you are the alien. You are the alien attacking the humans. Isn't that great? Castle Crashers. It's really cute, even though it's the same thing happened, but you just couldn't stop playing. <laughs> so, A tier. Good game. Days Gone. Now I know someone who plays Days Gone and she's re and she really likes it. But sadly, I haven't finished it, so I don't really know much about it yet. Another zombie game, but with a motorcycle. And yeah, that's really cool. But I don't know enough yet to rate it, so I'm gonna be fair and I'll put it in C. I'm so sorry. <laughs> the Chant. One of the first characters that had my name. Um... It's like your typical getting in yourself into a situation and now you have to get out of there. And then as you try to get out of here, things go bad and then you have to kill them. A story approach, you, you could guess very easily what happens next. So I'll put it in C as well. It's not the best, it's not the worst. Chasing the Unseen. Ah. <sighs> <sighs> A disappointing game actually. I've seen this before they release and I added to my wish list because I think it was so cool. They had their potentials, they were trying to reach to a point, but they they are barely doing it. It's like they're trying to be uh Shadows of Colossus, but ten but you're not actually fighting giants, you're just maneuvering the the universe where everything is bigger than you. Controls is fine, but them falling down from like a high place it takes like five seconds for them to get up and that is so slow oh god oh god oh god oh god <sighs> they're probably changing it and i'm and i just don't bother going back chasing the unseen e i'm sorry you can do better than that Dead space remake the moment they re released the remake is when i realized oh Dead space is actually really cool and this was after i played callisto protocol i do think Dead space remake is basically just a remaster of the the base of the the base of Dead space is still there but then they only change the textures and the graphics much more triple a ish and i think even the voice and the sound effects of the game are still the same but it's just that they uh, upgraded more beautiful and nice to look at. Plasma Cutter, best weapon. A. Dead Space 2, a great sequel to Dead Space. It actually goes on to see the effects of Isaac Clark after the events of Dead Space. Also the most brutal death scene. <laughs> oh, no! Ah, please call engineer. I'll give it an A right next to Dead Space. The Closing Shift, one of Chellis art games that I only played. I should play more, but it was kind of scary in some ways. I think a lot of Chilla's art games brings up on the issues of like being a female in Japan. In Japan, I kind of like it. Um, just very scary, because <laughs> I I hate getting creeped up like that. <laughs> Fucking hell! But I like the process of making coffee. It's cool. The exit 8. You're on your way to the exit platform, but you find out all the corridors are all looped. So you need to identify whether there's an anomaly at the current corridor you're in. And if there is, you turn back. And if you don't, you keep walking forward until you reach exit 8. Um, maybe I'll put it a B. Because their anomalies sometimes are very like easy to recognize. There was one that is very subtle. And that's really it. Cloud Puck. Probably the longest series that I play on the channel. I think I've made like 13 episodes on it. If there's no cutscenes, there's just you driving and delivering the, the car. But it's a very cool concept. I really like that uh, everything happens above the clouds. So all of these cities that we're in are actually all above the clouds, like right above us. So cyberpunk, but above the clouds. 
Cloudpunk. Man, it was really cool. And the next one is Cyberpunk. <laughs> okay, Cloudpunk, uh, let's see. Or Cloudpunk. Cyberpunk 2077. I do remember this game being memed a lot because of the bugs, but the bugs is where the charm is of this game. <laughs> and it's also the game that showcases if you rush developers to release a game, this is what happens. So I played this uh, this year and no bugs at all. Well, there's a little bit of bugs, but that bug helped me get through that boss stage. There was a bug when I fought uh, Adam Smasher. Um, he got missing. He was just two hits left and I can't see where he is. So I have to restart and play this boss stage all over again. But Julia Alvarez saves the day. <laughs> Beautiful female. <laughs> okay, B. Far Changing Tides. This really cool game that happens at the same time as Far Alone Sales. I like that they connect the story back together to the two characters. Far Alone Sales happens in like a... I think it was snow because everything was white. And Far Changing Tides happens all inside a submarine thing. So both of the games are vehicle management. You have to manage the... Uh, to not let it uh, heat up too much. I played this like probably two hours and then there are some puzzles there are more puzzles in far changing tides too far low cells the first game that i played this has an a and far changing tides maybe just right below it a little bit four of the five nights at freddy's oh, okay this game is great that's two <laughs> five nights at freddy's two eh, a this five nights at freddy's one is a classic five nights at freddy's two is really good but more scarier because you can't close the doors and also more enemies everything starts to get busy that you're not just looking look left and right you have to look left right front flash a few times pull up the camera make the music box pull down the mask for a few seconds and then you come back up and do the same thing again found as a phrase three i don't really get the mechanics heck i shouldn't stare at any of them god damn it so i'm gonna see far as a phrase four i know the charm to it they're uh they can use, make good use of sound design, they use the breathing sounds to make you think about if the animatronics are nearby. I'm bad at it, but I know the charm to it, so I'm calling it B. Dark Souls, I know good things about this game, so B, but I just can't beat it because I'm <laughs> I'm bad at it. Dead Cells, the first game that I played when I received a gaming laptop. It was a role league game, you die and you come back and then things get so you, you just keep going on until you beat the boss and do all these things. I can't beat the first boss, <laughs> but I like it. So, beep. Flicker of Hope, also known as Wick, when I first played this. You're playing as a little candle, roaming through the place. Um, I forgot where though, I don't know why. So I'm putting it C, maybe? I'll just put in B. The candlelight is cute. I'll cut it some slack. Gris, ah. <laughs> S tier. Don't start together. I played this once with two of my friends. Uh, and I'm gonna put it in B as well. Because why not? It's scary and sometimes. It's scary during night times. Devil May Cry 5. Huh. A. Currently I'm still playing Devil May Cry 3. I think I know how it progresses. So Devil May Cry 5 kind of like concludes the whole thing. And with better graphics as well. And their controls. Uh, on battling the combat system, it's really, really satisfying. Doom is great, but I didn't finish it. <laughs> I played it in my own time, but I, I didn't, I didn't finish it. I only went through halfway uh, because my gaming laptop couldn't handle it. But now that I have a, a desktop PC, I still haven't played it because there's no time for me. I'll come back to it. I like it. So, hey, Dredge is here as well. This is one of the games that. Uh, I didn't know that I would like a lot because all you're doing is that you're going out, you're fishing, and then you pay, and then you get money to upgrade your vehicle, or in this case, a ship. But then things start to progress, and then you start dredging up like things, treasures. And they added two DLCs, the Pale Reach and also the Iron Rig. The Iron Rig I recently finished yesterday. I think both of these DLCs are really good additions. The Pale Reach gave you an anchor that allows you to fast travel, and then Iron Rig is just a brand new location where you can upgrade even more things. A tier, dredge. Really good. Dying Light, parkour zombie game. It was so smooth, it was so uh, satisfying to jump from place to place, and then you're like going up and down. You have to do lockpicks, 
and then you crush all the zombies you can like you can even stomp on top of them elden ring i didn't play too much on it uh i beat Market, market to fell omen because I haven't got good yet, and then I never touched it again. <laughs> Story wise, it's really good, but I'm putting it C because Elden Ring has things that just <laughs> really beats the player on the ass. Epic Story Typing Chronicles. I played this because I wanted to see how fast I can type. Not the best though. B. Inside. Mm -hmm. I can't just put it in because I know the part of the sound effects that I really, really like. There you go, there's the frequency I need. I think I'm going lean into A. The sound design is mwah. Fall Guys. <laughs> C. Just shapes and beats. Another one of these hard either S or A tiers. It's a rhythm game. You're just a square and you go through levels. It's difficult sometimes. You know what? Just for the sake, I'm gonna A. The Forest Quartet. Not much to this story, actually. I think it's that you died and then you come back. You try to gather the band together again. So, just like that. B tier. Garden of Ban Ban. <laughs> I know people say it's bad. I know they're kind of like money grabbing things because they release episodes really quickly, but they're starting to slow down. No. This is a game that is really strange on this marketing. <laughs> when Garden of Ban Ban first released, they already tell people to buy their merch, and their merch is not that great. I'm not sure how they will end things, but for now, I don't even remember that I was in the kindergarten. How could the kindergarten build so damn big? I'm giving a D, because their control sucks. <laughs> Ghost Runner. If I'm good at it, it would be a very satisfying kill. But I'm not good at it. The graphics is cool. It gives you satisfying feeling of killing enemies. And also you can parkour. And that is like, what more can you ask for that? Uh, B. God Eater. It's kind of like Final Fantasy Online. No, it's basically Genshin Impact. Uh, you, you create a character, uh, you create a scenario, and then you go in the game. And then all you do is just find the, find the characters. I'll put a C. It's not the best, it's not the worst. You know what? No. <gasps> Guilt. Maybe I'll put this in B as well, because it touched me. Hades. I'm sorry, I can't put this way higher than B, because after you're done, after your first time you find Persephone, and then all you do is just come, come back again and find her again just to speak to her for a few minutes. I don't know, it's just not for me. I'm sorry, but the graphics are nice. Eh. Hades 2. Female protagonist. Uh, sister of Zacharias. I'm putting this B because they both are the same. It's still really fun to play. I like her weapons. I like her little two blade weapons. It's so cool. Happy game. It's a very weird game. Like you're on drugs, but when you reach the ending, you know why it was created this way. When there's ball, there's life, there's happiness. I'm putting it B as well. Headbangers Rhythm Royale. It's kind of like uh, fall guys, but it's pigeons and they're head banging. It's, and it's a rhythm game. <laughs> Their levels just seems more like a memory game rather than rhythm game. The only rhythm game that feels like actually a rhythm game is the uh, using their head to hit the balls. One go. Four five. One two three four five. Four, two three four. Because it's a little disappointing. Henry Stigman Collection. S tier. 100%. A classic Flash game. And this is a proof that you don't have to have great art to be successful. Like this game, all the characters are basically Stigmans. But they have story, they have dialogue that are very funny. They're like fucking Charles. Charles is very funny. Charles! Yes! Alright, here I come. I think they're all like the same voice actors too. <laughs> Human Fall Flat. I'll give it a B. It's funny. <laughs> you're controlling a ragdoll character and you're trying to get through the, the places. Hollow Knight. I beat Three Mantis and then I never touched it again. I put an A because of the soundtrack and the art. It's really cute and it's really beautiful 
I love it. Human resource machine. I don't have the brains for this, so I'm going to get C. <laughs> In pasto. The painter who did the 14 black paintings. So I was playing their grandson, who was going back to their house and trying to get all the black paintings back and put them in the museum. Elements, some of the levels actually like brings the paintings to life, especially the Mercury is sun part. Uh, I'll put it in uh, a B or a C because their story didn't really progress much. It's more about like showing off their paintings. B because I'm a big fan of her paint, his paintings, sorry. Indigo Park is a raccoon mascot. Need I say more? Raccoons are very underrated. This is still a demo. Uh, for now, I think they did pretty well uh, on building up the horrors underneath. Raccoon is really cute, but I'm putting a B. Jazz Punk Director's Cut. It's it's a comedic, a comedic game, and the characters are really funny. The dialogues are very really funny. Uh, I'll put an A. Keep in mind, a very short indie game in itch.io I think, but recently it came to Steam and then I played it. There's not much to it, uh, but I wouldn't say it's bad because there are some elements inside that hits close to home. Hmm. Maybe. I'll put a B. Left 4 Dead 2. Oh, a classic. I haven't played Left 4 Dead. Mm -hmm. I only The first time that I played this is Left 4 Dead 2, and I've played this quite a lot. Uh, I get lost easily, so I always have to bring my friend with me. I still love it to this day. Life is Strange True Colors. This is the newest addition to the Life, of, uh, Life is Strange series. Um, I didn't play the previous two ones. So True Colors, female protagonist, you can romance a girl character. And I think I got a really, really bad ending too. Because I was going through through my using my gut. I in my head and thinking that oh i'm just doing this for them and i think that they will be happy for it but apparently not i'm assuming too much so i got a very bad ending on this and that is a bad trait for me and i really need to try and change that to not assume what people need and to not do something that they think that you think it would help them but uh, i'm putting this in the c cookie omi a game about consideration mostly in the japan culture there's no story to this it's, it's mostly like simulations so b little nightmares classic uh yeah death of perception not that great but that is very very minor so a it is scary and fun and also very dark. Little Nightmares 2, an unexpected uh, prequel, actually. A little to the left, a very cute game. I don't know why the cat is brown here when you should be white. I'm not making a statement or anything, but this is how it looks like in the game. But then in this thumbnail, it was brown. <laughs> a very chill game about like organization. Uh, and sometimes your cat comes in to mess things up. Um, uh, fuck. Um, maybe, maybe just puzzles. Melatonin is another rhythm game that feels the same as Rhythm Heaven. So I'm putting this. <laughs> you know what? For the sake of an A, we haven't reached S tier yet because there's not enough levels. What is this? Milk inside a bag of milk inside a bag of milk. These two are visual novels. And they're tiny, tiny, easy, busy, little bit scary. But I think scary is just making it unsettling, not jump scares or anything. So I'm putting it in a C. It wasn't very memorable, both of them. Mortal Kombat X. That is the only Mortal Kombat that I've played for a few minutes with my friend. Uh, I'm not very familiar with the controls, but I know their charm to it, uh, with fatalities and everything. <laughs> the Mortuary Assistant. It was cool. It was an indie game that uh, that was legitimately scary. And it also randomizes. So every time you come back to play it, new demons come. B. <laughs> Mustache. Another rhythm game that I like. You can go next to Melatonin. I mean, they added Hasune Miku and Kagamine Rin and Len inside the game now as characters, as playable characters. How could you not love about that? Needy streamer overload. I played this once with my girlfriend sitting beside me just to look at it. It was quite boring in some ways. <laughs> it was like trying to maintain a sanity of the girl in front of you in the screen. So it's like we both are in a relationship. I'm not sure about that. Um, 
see. <laughs> Never saw the same developer that made Pinstripe. I really like their twists. Their twists on like who our main character is actually. And then you even have to battle with them. It's night in the woods. A or S? It was cute. And I really like the soundtrack. The soundtrack is something that is like similar to Undertale. You can replay it as long as you like. And it feels really comfortable. Sometimes I like to listen to their soundtrack when I was either cleaning things or doing work that is stressful. Their music is just really good. Not for broadcast, it's not for ADHD people like me. <laughs> you need to do a lot of things, some multitasking things. Uh, it's not for me, but I know some people will like it because it's actually really fun. I really like the concept of it. Kind of sad that it's not always new levels of playing um, inside the studio and controlling the things. Omen Sight, the first controller game uh, in my gaming laptop. Oh, it's been a while since I played that too. All I do remember is that that was a lie, I don't remember. Um, let's see, so far I don't have an F yet. Maybe I shouldn't even add this list. Nova Drift, it was cool. You're controlling a spaceship in space, and you're trying to shoot off the aliens. Omari! Omari, I'll put it in A as well. Next to Night in the Woods. Because I played Undertale before this, I thought that you need to spare the enemy. But in this case, it's just traditional enemy, uh, RPG, where you kill the boss, but then they won't die in real life, actually. I really like how their story goes, even though it takes a long time to go there, but they have some psychological horror elements I really like. Where am I sitting? Uh, and I like their twist, and I like their ending. One hand clapping. I didn't finish this to know what happens, but all I know is that the mechanics for this game is you use your voice to control the character. And also you! Come with me! So, B. Overcoat. If we're playing with friends, B. Pacific Drive. I didn't play this a lot to know what happens but this is another like a vehicle management game and you have to go through the levels to find things to get out of this place oh but the graphics are nice so be paladins wow <laughs> it's been a while since i've seen this this is me when i get a gaming laptop but i can't afford overwatch so this is like a replica of it uh, no. Hey, sorry. <laughs> Papers, please. S tier all the way. Glory to Ostoska. Papetula. I still don't know how to pronounce this. <laughs> A game made of from paper. They. I think they scanned or they take pictures of it and then they crop it into Unity to make it into a game. And that's really, really cool. Even though I get lost sometimes, some of the things are not very obvious to know where they're from. So they're right between A and B, but I'm going to give it A for visuals. <laughs> Pico Park. When you're playing with friends, A or actually B. Pizza Tower. Pizza Tower. I really like their style of animation. It's kind of like a Ren and Stimpy thing. It really stresses you out sometimes. <laughs> Wait, where's Cuphead? Oh, Cuphead is an A. Yeah, I haven't finished it, but uh, there are some difficult levels. It's kind of like a Cuphead thing. B. I'm sorry. Plague Inc. Evolve. The concept of it is very, very cool because you're basically making viruses and they're spreading all over the world and <laughs> you can create your name as COVID. That's all this game offers. So, platform 8. Where did I put Exit 8? Okay, if B tier, then also B tier. It's more scarier than Exit 8 though. And I do remember going to Osaka one time and this exact station was in it. I always find it really fascinating that they can replicate the things that they, they are like in real life. <laughs> this is getting long because there's a lot of B tiers. <laughs> Pools. I didn't play this a lot. All I know is that there are no jump scares, but it just make the environment is just very unsettling. C tier. <laughs> Raft. Uh, a great game when you play with friends. So it's kind of like Minecraft, but outside B tier. Raji the Ancient Epic. I remember no one was playing this game. I I think I was the first one to play this when they released it. Their theme based on Indian. Uh, it was Indian culture. A lot of them were all Indians. And female protagonists, you can fight, you can do gymnastics. You're just being a fluid lass. Badass. <laughs> I can't really put on the words together. Uh, B tier. Resident Evil 4 Remake. This is an A. Because they, they followed pretty much everything. They didn't cut a lot of things. I think the only thing that they uh, removed 
is that the laser room, but that laser room just moved to Ada's campaign. Resident Evil 4, the OG, the classic, S2. I even got it tattooed on my arm. I'm not sure if you can see it. Resident Evil 5, should I put it right next to Resident Evil 4 or Resident Evil 4 Remake? Play this with my friend, and together we are Chris and Shiva, and we save the world from Wesker. <laughs> Come on, I just came up here. Okay. Hold on. Okay, I'm gonna jump down. <laughs> <laughs> Probably because we play it in uh, multiplayer, so we don't get to experience the the fault of the AI in Resident Evil 5. <laughs> so hate hey, you. Resident Evil 6. This game has their has their faults. The controls for mouse and keyboard sucks. This was the first Resident Evil game that I played. Uh, right before Resident Evil 5 and Resident Evil 4 OG. Hell, I'm wearing an umbrella shirt. <laughs> I don't even remember wearing this. A lot of people don't like Resident Evil 6, and I know this. I, I enjoy it. The cool thing about Resident Evil 6 that I liked is that all of the four campaigns that you play, as Leon, as Chris, as Jake, as Ada, they're all connected in the same time at the same place. And if that's not the coolest, I'm, I don't know what is. So... I wouldn't be because of the controls are being a little wonky. Resident Evil Village. The village being the Roman numeral for 8. That's really cool. Their DLC expansion pack for Shadows of Rose. Also great. Next to 6. Everyone's fine with that. Return. Uh, it's very sad. So I played this. And I think I was going to almost the last bottle of last boss battle of the game they didn't have steam cloud so when i got this new computer and i wanted to go back into it i have to redo everything over again they don't have steam cloud they don't have safe spots it's like hollow knight but have guns but it's not as good as hollow knight Let's see rhythm doctor clean all the way risk of rain 2 uh is it an a tier or an s tier i would say risk of rain 2 like both of these they're just amazing games because they don't really have a storyline so you can always go for it whenever you want and there are always new challenges there are always uh, new champions new characters that you can play as and they have different uh, skills and it's just really fun to play with scorn Ooh, scorn scorn is a weird like disgustingly beautiful game <laughs> so the because I'm not sure about their story. SCP Secret Fast. It was a, a fantastic game too. There are a lot of SCP games before, but this game is uh, comes in a different approach. You're actually a scientist, you're going in, and you're experiencing that certain SCP. There are some SCPs that we know and some SCPs that they created. And I think that it's really cool that they also, depending on that certain SCP, they change the game style of it. For example, the toaster was made into a pixel game, and then there's one that is like a mummified, and that is an actual horror game. So they implemented a lot of types of games depending on the SCP that you are reading about, and that is really cool. So I'm giving this an S. This deserves much more attention. I'm not sure if people know about this game, but I really want them to know, especially if you're a fan of SCP. Season. Uh, Lander to the future. I think that's the name of this game. <sighs> I'm sorry. I tried. I tried playing it, but as it goes on, because it was so slow paced, it was just not for me. The shady part of me. It was a cute little game of a little girl uh, controlling the shadows of herself as well. Um, I don't really remember if this has anything to do with like being yourself and accepting yourself, something like that. But I really like it. I like their puzzles. I like their uh, like puzzles that uses with light and shadow. Sky. I hate you all the way. <laughs> I don't think I need to explain. Slay the Princess. It was the game that I played this year as well. I think it was in July, August that I finished. So many branches, so many endings, so many new characters. Because you can always replay back and different outcomes come here. So this game expands so much. It was a lot of things. And their pristine cut is coming. So that means even more endings coming. S tier voice acting, S tier artworks, S tier story. 
so much good things about this game. The character of who I was was a great twist too. <laughs> Slay the Spire. Where is Black Book? Uh, I'm gonna put it slightly higher than Black Book because this is basically the original of a turn-based combat. Uh, artwork is cute, if I remember. <laughs> Somerville. Ooh, where is inside? There you go. You can be with inside. And I think it was the same, like, sound designer that came to an, that made a new studio for himself and made Somerville. When I first played this, the controls are a little bit wonky, but sound design is still amazing. Spiritfarer, another vehicle management just like Dredge. I can't believe I would like management games. If you want me to recommend management games to you, it's either Far Don't Sells, Dredge, or Spiritfarer. That three of these games are really, really cool. Like at first you're like, oh, I got a boat. And then you start going on and then you take care of the people on the boat. But then you realize it's a game about life and death. And so when you get attached to them and then when they when you send to their journey to like to their final destination, you can't help but like get teary-eyed because you miss them so much, you know that you will never see them again. Stray. Stray has a nice twist of the story to it. But okay, you're playing as a cat. And I don't think this needs more explanation. <gasps> I can meow on command! Hey dear. <laughs> Super Animal Royale. It's like PUBG. Uh, but it's top-down and 2D cartoon of animals. The animals are really cute. They're all furious little fellas. That's not for me. C tier. I would recommend it to people if they like it, but uh, I won't play it with them because I'm bad at it. I, it's not for me. Tell me why. This game is kind of like similar to Life is Strange. Each episode is, is like three hours and it's the longest video that I've ever uploaded to my channel. I think it's about finding out the reason why their mother uh, like after their mother died they want to find out their reasons and find out their secrets and find out who's like behind all of this i think the one thing that they did well was that they actually uh, hired a trans man to voice the trans man character <laughs> the police officer who arrested me uh this is c titan 4 2 Ooh, eight year old way you get you get to ride a robot you get to parkour it was satisfying it was smooth it was amazing text resist what tier did i put for uh not for broadcast i put it in b tier huh well maybe that's a little bit lower because all you're doing is that you're typing the bible phrases as you were dodging the enemy's attacks so there's a lot of uh, multitasking to do and it's really really difficult ultimate chicken horse oh this tier come on it was the greatest game for friends you can fuck them up <laughs> undertale s tier unfinished swan it was a cool concept you're you're painting ink all around your uh surroundings just to know which place you're going i think it's a very linear story approach and this this game is probably selling because of like the cool mechanics of throwing ink just to know which, uh, what environment you're in and then it lets you imagine about it. So, B. Unheard. This is a detective game that only uses audio and hearing. You're walking around in a top-down view, I think, and then when you walk around, you might hear new, th new things. If you stay at the same spot for a while, you might hear new, new things as well. It's a cool game. So, B. Uno. Inside the goose game, you're playing as a goose. S tier. Venba, very cute game. Another Indian culture game uh, about cooking the food and learning about the like, like teenage growing up in the like an immigrant. So you know their stress about you know being different or they're hiding what their own culture is. Warframe. I know someone who likes this game and I like it too. I played a few before. But once I get this computer, I don't think I've ever played it again because it's so large, it's so big. It was amazing. The, the characters inside, the armors inside, it was so cool and so detailed. It makes you know why this game is so large. I went in A tier because of their amazing designs of enemies and characters and all the levels. And the control, you can dash and spin. That was <laughs> that was very satisfying. What the golf? Played this a little bit. Very funny. Very funny in some ways. A tier. Unrailed. Fun with friends. A tier. Watch Dogs 2. I didn't finish this, but uh, 
bitter. And there you go. After two hours of recording, <laughs> I managed to put how many were there even? It said about 130 files. Yeah, 130. 130 games that I played uh, in this tier list. I am ready for the argument underneath the comments below. <laughs> You're going to tell me which one, of the, which one of these games are actually supposed to be S tiers and you're going to beat me down and cancel me. I'm just kidding, but it's fine if you feel that way. And that's all. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.